On this episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV, we're going to exhaust you with the topic of catalytic converters. One of the things we love to hate are catalytic converters, but it's one of the necessary components of your vehicle's emissions control system. And when they go bad, performance goes right out the window. Now let's start by talking about what a catalytic converter does. Now it basically takes the uh, spent exhaust gases that are, that are uh, compounds, uh, chemical compounds that are hard to break up into the atmosphere and turns them into basically free radicals. So what happens is as the exhaust gas travels uh, from the uh, combustion chamber through the exhaust, the catalytic converter will break down uh, harmful chemicals such as hydrocarbons and uh, carbon monoxide, both are very poisonous, into uh, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and water. Now on a three-way catalytic converter, which is what we use today, there's also another compound that is a heavy component of ozone called NOx, or oxides of nitrogen. And what it does is this three-way catalytic converter actually breaks those down into just nitrogen. Now, in most cases, a catalytic converter will last the life of the vehicle as long as you keep your vehicle in a good state of tune. Now, on our Project Chevy truck, this has actually had the converters replaced already one time, and it was due to a failing uh, oxygen sensor. Now, they put a new set of catalytic converters on and didn't know that the oxygen sensor was creating the problem. So what's happened here is you can see how they're bluish, and they've, they've gotten very, very hot again. That's from the gases that are actually burning, or the fuel that actually is burning inside the catalytic converter. It gets very hot. Now, that, because the, the uh, oxygen sensor wasn't replaced in time, has created another problem. As you can hear, inside the catalytic converter, it's rattling. What's happened is it's broken that catalyst free from the uh, inside of the case. Now, what we've chosen to do today, because we live in California, we don't have much of a choice. We need to go with a factory replacement catalytic converter. Now, Magnaflow has a direct bolt-on. It matches up exactly. This particular vehicle has two catalytic converters. Now, some of your newer vehicles, 2005 and newer, will have as, uh, as many as two catalytic converters per bank. So if you have an eight-cylinder that's uh, a V8, you're going to have two catalytic converters on the right bank and two catalytic converters on the left. Fortunately for us, we just have two. So we're going to put our Magnaflow system on our truck and uh, get rid of this rattle and get our emissions back in spec. When you're browsing for catalytic converters on Autosport.com, you'll see whether your vehicle has direct fit, universal, or both styles of catalytic converters available. If you live in California, you'll also want to take notice of whether the catalytic converter is carb legal by looking in the product descriptions. Now, one of the symptoms of a failing catalytic converter or some other component going wrong that will affect your catalytic converter is the smell of rotten eggs. Now what that is, is that's a sulfur smell, and that's the uh, catalyst inside the catalytic converter actually melting and, and getting so hot that uh, some of that platinum is, is mixing with some of those other chemicals and creating that smell at the exhaust pipe. Usually, um, if you catch that in time, you can uh, stop from uh, completely ruining the catalytic converter. However, chances are it's going to not be long before you're going to need to replace it, and you're going to find that out probably when you go to your emissions test station. Magnaflow's direct fit catalytic converters are designed to give you everything that you need to get your vehicle's emission system and exhaust system back into shape. Now, they come with basically the piping and the catalytic converter to bolt just like the OEM does. Now, to install them, you simply remove your old catalytic converter and put the new one in place. Now, this can be a much cheaper alternative in most cases, especially if you have the catalytic converter that's built into the exhaust manifold, say. What this allows you to do is bolt it on yourself. In most cases, you don't need a welder. Now with the universal weld-in, they are typically less expensive than the direct bolt-ins, and you use your factory piping as long as it's still in good condition. Either way, you're getting a high-flow catalytic converter from Magnaflow that replaces your factory system. Now we're going to install both types on our Project Transfat to show you the difference in how they install and the advantages of both. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and unbolt our downpipes. Now uh, there are also three oxygen sensors that we're going to need to pay attention to. One on each downpipe, then there's one right before the catalytic converter on this side. Now our other one is after the flange, after the second catalytic converter. So there's actually four oxygen sensors on this, but we're only going to have to worry about three of them.
Now, one of the important things about exhaust manifold bolts and something that will make this very much, much easier for you, what you need to do is, before you actually try to break these bolts loose, you want to spray them with some sort of a penetrating uh, lubricant like PB Blaster. That's what we've used on these. Let it soak for a while. It's going to make these bolts come off a lot easier. You've got to remember, these manifolds get extremely hot, red hot, and those uh, metals expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting are going to make them uh, really susceptible to being stuck together. So that PB Blaster is going to make a big difference. Okay, now our catalytic converters are actually welded in place, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a couple of cuts, and then our new one will bolt right into place. Now, these are the catalytic converters that we took out of our Chevy truck, and we knew that the one was broken. However, I did not know that they were both broken. And as you can see, this one was pretty uh, rattled inside too. This is the one that I thought was actually good. And this right here is basically the catalyst that is in the uh, inside this. It's full of it. This is the honeycomb material, and it's broken up. Now, we actually had a check engine light on this saying that we had uh, a lean... Uh, uh, bank, uh, we had a, so we had a trouble code, and that's exactly what was causing this. Now, what created this whole problem was when those oxygen sensors went bad and filled these exhaust uh, or these catalytic converters with fuel. Okay, now the first step is going to be install uh, a portion of our exhaust. Now, we want to do this side first because it's going to be the hardest to manipulate in there. On the second pipe that we're going to put in there, it actually has a flange that, uh, it's a slip flange. This right here is what bolts those together and holds them together and keeps them from, and makes sure that they seal. So you want to make sure that you put this on before, otherwise you've got to take everything off and start over again. Okay, now that we've got the two pipes slid in place, we're going to go ahead and put our donut gasket in, and then we're going to start our nuts on this flange and not, uh, of course, tighten them either. Now we're going to go ahead and put our oxygen sensors back in. Now these are subject to quite a bit of heat as well. So what you're going to want to do is you want to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads, not a lot. Make sure you don't get it on the actual probe itself. And then you can put them in there. That way if you have to take them out, they're going to come out easily. All right, as you can see, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, installing a direct fit magna flow catalytic converter system on your vehicle is real simple. Now, if you're just going to take it to a muffler shop, we've got another option for you. You buy a universal uh, weld-in type, take it to your local muffler shop. We're going to take our trans fat truck over to King's Muffler and show you what it looks like when he's finished. Okay, now we got our truck back from Mike at King's Muffler. Mike does a fantastic job, and what we had him do is we had him make a new crossover pipe for us. Uh, so that it would be tucked up nice and tight. And the reason is, we know we're going to slam our truck even more. Now, the factory replacement uh, direct fit system from MagnaFlow is a great option, but we wanted to get that crossover pipe up nice and tighter. So what we've done is, we got a set of weld-in catalytic converters from MagnaFlow, and we put those babies in place. Now, these are legal, and uh, now our truck meets the emission standards.
All right, now we've just pulled Project Transfat off of our Dynacom dyno. Now, we knew that our catalytic converters were plugged. Of course, we knew that they were broken. Didn't know it to the extent of it. Now, as we were making our dyno pulls, there was a, uh, some of our catalyst actually came blowing out of the exhaust, so it had gone back in there. So it was definitely plugged, and as you can see, there is a, a lot of uh, the residue here where it's actually been plugged. We actually picked up over eight horsepower just by changing the uh, catalytic converters. Another issue that we had with our project transfat is the check engine light was on. It was on because it had a faulty uh, emissions code uh, and it actually was, a, was the P0420 code which indicates that there might possibly be a converter problem and of course we found out that there was. So now that we've got everything dialed in we're ready to go on with the continued upgrades of project transfat. We hope you've learned something today about catalytic converters and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Autosport TV.